fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. His faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'll Silver. When the war between the states came to a close, John Matthews was a young doctor in Philadelphia. He had long been in love with Priscilla Dean, but he had waited until the end of hostilities to present his case. And with characteristic shyness, he approached the matter. They are quite beautiful tonight, Priscilla. Thank you, John. You're more complimentary than usual. It is not that thee has not been beautiful before, only more so tonight. Is it because Captain Dunham has returned from the war? You, you knew he was back in Philadelphia? Yes, I met him today. That is why I asked to see thee tonight, Priscilla. Yes. I... I am not a man of fluent speech, Priscilla. I am a plain man, and I must speak plainly. Priscilla... Will thee marry me? John, why have you waited until now to ask me to be your wife? It would have been unfair to thee and to Captain Dunham as well, had I asked for thy hand before he returned from the war. The least I can say is that you are a gentleman, even though you are a coward. Thee calls me a coward, Priscilla. I know of no better name for it. Don't you know that there was a war? That men fought and died for an ideal... And that Captain Dunham risked his life for four long years in defense of that ideal? Thee judges me wrong, Priscilla. I am a man of peace. I abhor war. It is my belief that the ideal for which the nation strove could have been attained without bitterness and bloodshed. And that is an excuse for your cowardice. John Matthews, I've known for a long time that you loved me, but... But I've waited and waited and waited for this moment. Waited to give you my answer. Thee does not love me. No woman loves a coward. Very well, Priscilla. I sincerely wish thee happiness. Captain Dunham will make thee a good husband. Good night, Priscilla. Goodbye. John. Oh, John. What have I done? After John Matthews had passed through the door, Priscilla Dean realized that she had let four years of war's pent-up emotions destroy her love for the young doctor. 
She accepted the proposal of Captain Dunham and saw no more of Dr. Matthews. On the day after her wedding, Priscilla learned that John had left Philadelphia. For where, no one seemed to know. Two months later, the Lone Ranger and Tonto sat their mounts on a butte not far from the big trail that led through Bridger Pass and over the Continental Divide. Far below them, a wagon train moved slowly westward toward the pass. Them people go to Oregon, Kimasabi? Oregon or California, Tonto. Oh, plenty big party, plenty wagons. One of the wagons is pulled out of line. Ah, maybe it break, huh? No, I don't think so. See, Tonto, a man's getting out of it. Ah, another man lift trunk out of wagon. Put trunk on ground. I thought for a moment he might be transferring to one of the other wagons. That doesn't seem to be the case. His wagon's rejoining the caravan. Well, maybe them not like him. Put him out. No, you're wrong about that. See, everyone in the caravan is waving goodbye to him. He's waving to them. Uh, it's not good man leave wagon train here. Plenty Indian in mountains. Them not like white man stop here. Yes, you're right, Toto. This is dangerous country. You better go down there and find out why that man left the wagon train. Uh, Monsilver! Get him up, scout! Hello there. How? Good day, my friends. Do thee come to welcome me? Or is it my place to welcome thee? Well, from what you say, you intend to stay here. So Tonto and I accept your welcome. Won't thee dismount? Perhaps a cup of tea would help thee and I to know each other better. Thanks. When Dr. John Matthews had served tea against the strange background of snow-capped mountain peaks and rolling plains, the Lone Ranger said... Do I presume correctly that you intend to remain here? That is my intention, my friend. Do you realize this is dangerous country? The Indians will resent your presence on their lands. They will at first, perhaps, but I do not want their lands. Then you have no fear of them? I fear no man. Not even thee who wears the mask of a bandit. I noticed that when I rode up and was invited to tea. I might have robbed you. If thee needs whatever I possess, I would give it to thee gladly. It would not be robbery. The Indians will soon learn that I am not an intruder, but a friend. When you opened your trunk, I saw a number of surgical instruments and quantities of medical supplies inside. I am a physician and surgeon. <laughs> I know you think I'm inquisitive, but what do you, a physician and surgeon, intend to do here? I intend to serve my fellow man, whether he be white or red, just as God willed it. Toward this pass will come many who have been made ill by the long trip across the plains. I will administer to their needs. And any red man suffering from disease or wounds will be just as welcome. All I ask is that they call me friend. Oh, mm, that's plenty good name. Dr. Friend. To show we're your friends, Tonto and I will help you build your cabin. <laughs> well, thy generous offer reminds me of a jest that is sometimes made at our expense. A uh, jest? Yes, it is frequently said of us Quakers that we came to this country to do good. So we stayed and did well. I invite thee and thy Indian friend to partake of a cup of tea which costs me little. In return, thee builds me a house to live in. <laughs> a Quaker bargain, some would call it. <laughs> I see. Thus was a bond of friendship formed between the Lone Ranger and Tonto and the man they knew only as Dr. Friend. In the two years that followed, many others who passed over the Great Divide had reason to also call him Friend and all wondered how he could live unmolested in this wild region in which the Indians were growing more and more resentful of white men who passed over the big trail. It was when this resentment neared its peak that a small party of wagons halted on the big trail a few miles east of Bridger Pass. Pull up here! Ansel Foster, the wagon boss, rode up and dismounted the breast of the lead wagon. A middle-aged woman looked at him inquiringly as he dismounted. Why is the wagon train stopping here, Ansel? We're going to have to make camp, Mrs. Murphy. Make camp here? Why, Ansel, sure, and it's dangerous to stop here. 
We was told not to stop until we got through Bridger Pass if we didn't want trouble with engines. I know, but it's the Dunham baby. He's mighty sick. Oh, ain't it a shame, Ansel? That yes. poor little baby. And I feel so sorry for Mrs. Dunham. Her having lost her husband not long ago. And now the baby. Yes, it'll hit mighty hard if she loses the baby. Just as she's starting out to make a new life here in the West. Oh, sure, and it will, Ansel. Yep. Uh, just help me out of this wagon, sir. Right. Uh, here we are. She's two wagons back, Mrs. Murphy. Is the baby dying, Ansel? Yes, I'm afraid so. A trip like this is mighty hard on sick folks. Particularly babies. Nothing here long, Ansel? Be back shortly, Bill. All right. You say her husband's dead? She told me he died a year ago in Philadelphia. Baby was born right after. Uh, you know, I, I couldn't bear to keep the wagons moving with the baby dying. It just don't seem right. Sure, and you did right, Ansel. Well, here we are. I'll help you up. Is he there? You coming in, Ansel? Well, I'll stand here at the tailgate in case I need it. Is there anything I can do, Mrs. Dunham? No. No, thanks, Mrs. Murphy. If only there were a doctor. Oh, why, child, there's no doctors in this godforsaken country. Or we'd have had one for your baby long before this. Yes. Yes, I know you would. Oh, my baby. Baby, he's so sick. Oh, you poor thing. Now, why don't you lie down and try and get no. some rest? I'll sit up with the baby. I couldn't sleep. I just couldn't. Hansel Foster. Hansel. Hey, here I am. Be quiet out there, Hansel, will you? Hansel. Indians. Yes, I see him. What's that, Hansel? Indians, Mrs. Murphy. They're riding in on us. Oh, heavens above, as if we didn't have troubles enough without him. We'll get the wagons in a circle and make a stand against him. You get the women and children together and put them inside the circle. Hurry, Mrs. Murphy, they're coming fast. Come on, Mrs. Dunham, we've got to get out of the wagon. My baby, my baby, oh, you're done. Come on now, I'll help you and the boy out of the wagon. Come along. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, no fella. I hear fella. gunfire, Toto. Ah, me here too. Come from Big Trail. We can see the trail after we top the ridge ahead of us. A few moments later, as they drew their horses to a stop on the top of the ridge, the Lone Ranger and Tonto saw in a glance what was happening below them. Four Conestoga wagons had been drawn closely together, and a band of 50 Indians, riding fleet-footed ponies, were circling about them, firing as they rode closer and closer. Pilgrims make big mistake. Stop on trail. They must have had a reason for stopping. I told at Leavenworth to keep moving until they get through Bridger Pass. And what we do? It would be death for both of us if we went down there to help them. We'd accomplish nothing. Mm, that right. Keep plenty Indians there. But we've got to do something and do it quickly. As the masked man and his Indian companion watched the scene below them, they tried desperately to think of an immediate means of helping the beleaguered pioneers. Toto looked over the hills and peaks as if looking for help he knew he would not see. Suddenly, he pointed to a high bluff a half mile away and said, Look, Kimasabi. What is it, Toto? Me see Indian on bluff. Yes, and he seems to be watching us. What do you make of it? Well, him sentry. If help come for wagon train, him send signal in smoke. That's it, all right, Toto. See, he's starting to pile up brush. Him signal Indian, him see us, maybe. We'll pretend to ride away, but we'll cut around behind him. And why do that? I have an idea how we might help those pilgrims. We've got to stop that sentry from sending a signal. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Oh, Silver. Oh, 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 fella. Oh, fella. Oh, fella. Oh, why we stop here, Kimasabi? We'll just not leave our horses concealed here. Silly Silver. Easy, easy Scout. Easy, fella. Easy. Come on, Toto. We'll make as little sound as possible. We see sentry now, Kimasabi. In pile up brush to make signal fire. Yes, and his rifle's leaning against a tree. If he sees us first, he'll rush for his rifle. And the shots might be heard on the trail. We've got to prevent that. Him light fire now. Yes, he's getting it started. So far, he hasn't sent a signal. Now get ready, Toto. Me ready. We'll rush him before he knows we're here. All right, steady. Let's go. He's going for the rifle. He get gun. I'll get him. No, you don't. I did it, Toto. Ah, and me got gun. You hit him plenty hard. Him sleep now. He'll be unconscious for a while, but I'll tie him up. Now, me get rope from saddle. Bring a blanket, Toto. From now on, you and I will make the smoke signals.
the curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. to continue our story. On the big trail leading to Bridger Pass, the small group of travelers had barricaded themselves within the protecting ring of their four wagons. But the circle of wildly riding Indians was growing closer and closer. How does it look to you, Mr. Bad, Mrs. Murphy, very bad. When they get close enough to fire these wagons, we'll, we'll all be done for. Oh, then it won't be long. The redskins are getting closer for the second. How's Mrs. Dunham and the baby? Oh. Poor woman, I feel sorry for him. Yeah, yeah. Maybe God will take the boy before the Redskins get their hands on him. Sure, and I hope so. So do I, Mrs. Murphy. Hansel, Hansel Foster. What is it, Bill? Well, they're withdrawing. The Indians? Uh, yeah, look at them. See, they pulled up on that rise over yonder. Well, they're looking at something. Sure, it's a smoke signal on the bluff. Must be a message. I can see it now. Ansel, can you make it out? Well, I haven't read an Indian signal in 20 years, but... But golly, I believe I can read this one. What's it say? Now, I'm not sure, but I think it's got something to do with soldiers. Or the army or something. Look, Ansel, the engines are riding away. Well, I'll be a salamander. They're retreating. But, and I was right. The army's on the big trail. We're saved. They had a sentry posted up there. He must have seen the soldiers yeah. coming. Well, let's go to the rest of the folks and tell them the good news. Yeah. We're saved. We're saved. Boys, the army's on the way to help us. <laughs> Believing that somewhere back on the big trail, a troop of soldiers was approaching, the pioneer staged a wild but brief celebration. It was Mrs. Murphy who cut it short. Now that's enough of this. We've been saved and we are thankful. But don't forget there's one among us who's not long for this world unless a miracle happens. That's right, folks. Mrs. Murphy speaks the truth. It's no time to celebrate. Now, get to your posts. When you see the soldiers, don't start yelling and screaming. Let's see how Mrs. Denham and the boy fared during the fighting. Yes, I haven't had time to look after them the way I wanted to. Yeah. <laughs> How's the baby, Mrs. Dunham? He, he seems to be resting, Mrs. Murphy, but I... I don't know. Oh, I'm afraid. Oh, now, now, you must be brave. <laughs> The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Hey, Ansel, two men are riding in here. Hey, what's that? He said two men are riding in here. There they are. One's an angel. <gasps> Isn't that big one wearing a mask on his face? Yes, he is. Here they come. Who's in charge of this wagon train? I am. And who are you? A friend. You've got to get these wagons moving toward the pass as quickly as you can. When the Indians learn that they've been tricked, they'll return. Tricked? What are you talking about? The Lone Ranger quickly explained that the smoke signals were sent by himself and Tottle, and that no troops were on the way to help the pilgrims. Ansel Foster and the others suspected the masked man's story was untrue. Now, if you get to the pass, you'll be safe. They won't molest you there. And why won't they? I haven't time to explain. Get the wagons moving quickly. No, sir. I won't do it. I'm not taking orders from a masked man. And as for that Indian who's with you... We should string him up on general principles. Why won't you do what I tell you? Sure, and I'll answer that, mister. See this baby here? Yes. He's dying, the poor little fella. He'll not die in a rolling wagon. If God's going to take him, he'll do it here in peace and quiet. Steady, Silver. Easy, big fella. Do you mind if I look at the child, ma'am? No. You may look at him. He, he's so sick. Yes, I can see he is. We must get him to a doctor at once. A doctor? 
You know where to find a doctor. Yes, there's one in the pass, oh. less than ten miles from here. Oh, she here, mister. You've gone far enough. What's the matter? You've tried to get us into that pass once, and we didn't fall for your trick. Now you're using this sick baby to put something over on us again. You're not going to get away with Don't it. Don't draw that gun. <laughs> Sorry I had to strike you, but this is no time for stubbornness. There are two things that must be done immediately. First, we've got to get this child to a doctor. Next, you've got to move this wagon train to the pass. Oh, All right, I'm taking over. Why, you ornery critter, drawing guns on peaceful people? Your men folks are not peaceful. Tonto, uh -huh. you stay here with the wagons. Lead them to the pass. Yeah, me do it. Now, ma'am, I'm taking this baby. No, no, you can't take him away from me. Keep those men covered, Tonto. Uh, me cover them. You'll see your child, ma'am, when you reach the pass. Oh. Come on, little fellow. Any children, easy now. If anything happens to that child, we'll hang this Indian friend of yours. Nothing will happen to him. One, two, three. Oh, my baby, my baby. He's gone. Oh, oh, oh. A baby boy. He's very ill, Doctor. Well, let me have the little fellow. Yes. Uh, there. Aye. Steady, Silver. Easy now. Well, where did you get him? His mother's with a caravan that will soon be coming into the pass. He needs immediate attention. Let us go into the cabin. Right. He's very young to make a hazardous trip across the plains. He's a very frail lad. Now I'll place him here on my table. Oh, now, now, little fellow. He cry all he can. So long as they cry, there is life and they will live. Can I help you, Doctor? If they will remove the little fellow's clothing while I get my stethoscope and medicine. Gladly. Easy now, little fellow, while I get this gold necklace off. There. He wears a nameplate, huh? I think that's it. Now off comes a shirt. In the hour that followed, Dr. John Matthews, the good Quaker, examined the child, administered to the baby's needs, and then tucked him into his own bed. As he returned to the table... The Lone Ranger asked... What chance does he have to live, Doctor? With rest and quiet, a long rest and much quiet, he will be all right, my friend, thanks to thee. You'd better put this necklace with his clothing, Doctor. Oh, yes, by all means, it might become lost. Let me have it. Uh, here. What? John Matthews Dunham. Why? What's the matter, Doctor? Did thee say the mother of the child was with the wagon train? Yes, she is. He did not mention the father of the child. I don't know if his father was with the train or not. Why do you ask? Fate weaves a tangled web, my friend. It must have been God's will that made me come here. Not my own, as I had thought. I don't understand, Doctor. Thee has been my friend. I shall tell thee why I came to live here, alone. I have often wondered why you did. Thee has never asked my name. It, too, is John Matthews. Slowly, the Quaker doctor's story unfolded. How he had loved a girl, and how she had called him a coward. How she had married his rival, Captain Dunham. I knew I would never love another. I decided to devote my life to the service of others. That is why I came here. You're not a coward, doctor. You're one of the bravest men I've ever known. I thought it was my own decision. But it was the will of God that sent me here to save the life of this little boy. Her boy. The wagons are arriving, Doctor. Yes. Yes, I hear them. It is a most difficult moment, my friend. I must think. My baby, where is he? Here he is. He's sleeping now. Oh, let me see. I know how you feel, Mrs. Dunham, but please don't disturb him. Will, will he live? The doctor says he will. The doctor? Oh, yes. The doctor, where is he? Here. I am glad to see thee, Priscilla. John. John Matthews. It's you. You've saved my baby. It was God's will that he lived. John, I, I've wondered what happened to you, where you'd gone. Oh, I wanted to know about you, John. Where's the boy's father, Priscilla? His father? John, Captain Dunham died a year ago. The baby was born soon after it was his wish and mine that we name him John Matthews. They're coming. The rescue is coming. The Indians? Oh, John, what'll we do? Have no fear, Priscilla. They will not harm thee. But, but they were going to kill us all. The masked man saved us. Yes, him. I know. That is why he urged thee and the others to hasten here. 
It is wise that Thee obeyed him promptly. I don't understand. Come with us, Mrs. Dunham. You'll soon understand. But my baby, I won't leave him. He sleeps peacefully, Priscilla. Thee need have no fear for the boy. Come with the masked man. All right, attention, everyone. Don't display any arms, and don't under any circumstances fire on the Indians who are riding in. You crazy? They'll wipe us out. No, they won't. They'll not harm you here. Doctor, take charge of the situation. I thank thee, my friend. Who's there? I see your brother. How, my friends? Oh, oh, oh. I welcome thee, my red brothers. My friends here greet thee in peace, not as enemies. I, I can't understand it. He seems to have cast a spell over them. No, it's not a spell. The doctor's become a friend of the Indians. He cared for them when smallpox hit their village. He treated them and made them well. They trust the doctor. Then that's why you wanted the wagons to get here as soon as possible. Yes. I didn't have time to explain that the doctor had lived here among the Indians. You see, he's their brother. They will harm no one who is his friend. And and I called him a coward. Priscilla. Yes, John? Let us return to the boy. I have... Much to say to thee. Yes, John. As the Quaker doctor and Priscilla Dunham went into the cabin, the pioneers crowded about the Lone Ranger and Tonto, pressing for an explanation. The masked man told them how Dr. Matthews had been known only as Dr. Friend until the arrival of their caravan, told how his cabin was the meeting place of red men and white, where all mingled in peace. Then the door of the cabin opened, and Dr. Matthews and Priscilla came out, hand in hand. Here comes Mrs. Dunham and the doctor. With all eyes turned upon them, Dr. Matthews and Priscilla walked slowly toward the group of pioneers and Indians. And when they paused, Dr. Matthews spoke in the plain and simple language of the Quaker. In the presence of God and all thee assembled here, I, John Matthews, take this woman, Priscilla Dunham, as my wife. And... In the presence of God and all the assembled here, I, Priscilla Dunham, take John Matthews as my husband. And as God has willed, the child of Priscilla Dunham now becomes my child. And I vow to be a dutiful father to him and shall raise him as my own son. So be it. The will of God. Amen. Congratulations. Thank you. is a feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Brace Beamer.